This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Dacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're reviewing Chanel's Cruise Collection 2022-2023, the Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo Cruise Collection. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks such as pre-shows, live pre-shows, exclusive only to tier two members. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob All Spelled Together, for special perks, including the pre-show too. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday and you are all invited to join the fun and the convos. So I have my little Chanel platinum ruban ring, my little Chanel bracelet on, uh, and I got a little Chanel goodies in front of me for Leada. But for now, let's watch the show together. Mind you, I'm only expressing my own opinions in this video. This is only for entertainment purposes only. It's all just my opinion. I am reviewing the video directly taken from Chanel's YouTube channel. So this does fall under fair use. Chanel, thank you. Uh, the music has been changed. I'm not using their music. I'm using music that is allowed to be used by other YouTubers as well. So here goes. We'll go, we'll go. Let's see what Chanel has to offer. Come on, Virgin Yar. Show us what you got, girl. Monte Carlo 5522, because the show happened on, in May, May 5th of 2022. But it's Cruise 2223. So obviously, Monte Carlo is famous for what? Princess of Monaco, right? Grace Kelly, also her daughter and her granddaughter. But it's also famous for the Monte Carlo Grand Prix, the the grand prize of Monte Carlo, which is Formula One or whatever that's called, right? So obviously, we're going to get a lot of checkered things and caps that remind us of the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. As you can see, it looks like, she, there you go, that's why we also have the helmet. So this is just to understand the context. Obviously, this is a very editorial piece. Somebody might wear it on the red carpet, but it's nothing groundbreaking and actually quite uninspired. It's kind of very easy to just, oh yeah, Grand Prix of Monte Carlo. So let's make Formula One outfits for them. Ha ha ha, how original. So not impressed there. Monte Carlo is also famous for its casinos, you know, gambling. That's why we have that little necklace with the with our card holder in the shape of hearts, right? Of a card heart card so that's going to be the gimmick of this show we already realized that first couple of looks in we get it it's referencing all of the biggest cliches monte carlo has to offer the grand prix the gambling uh you see that little thing dressed in blue sitting on the dock that is princess um prince she princess yeah charlotte kaziragi obviously uh chanel we can see separates all the tiers of customers first class second class third class on the beach is like first class but VIP VIP is on the is right there on in the water and that's where Charlotte Kaziragi is also sitting she's like my parents are allowing you to use this territory for your little fashion show I need to sit in the best spot thank you the gold okay the lame kind of pants as opposed to that tweed jacket doesn't work for me these new bags hmm no, it's not a seasonal piece I'm craving with these kind of flap. You see that red one she has with a little flap on the flap? Nah. It's a very fascinating... You see the details, black and white checkered on the pocket, again referencing uh, Grand Prix, but this kind of combination that Virginie Bia is doing this season of patchworking clothes and textures on top of each other, maybe it's something... Uh, you see like a gold jacket and then we got the black and white underneath and then that really oversized bowling kind of weekender bag and then these kind of really tiny filigran uh, accessories. It's a bit much. This is kind of referencing Dior, referencing Chanel, referencing Dior again. It ain't cute. <laughs> the print and pattern on, on the t-shirt also ain't cute. Um, but anyway, so she, she's, she's mixing up quite a bit of patterns, patchwork, textures, materials, and it's kind of all layered. So it seems to be a collection that takes a lot of time. The flags of the Grand Prix, <laughs> RuPaul is gonna want this one for RuPaul's Drag Race, I guess. It takes some time maybe to understand the beauty of this collection because seeing it just like this for the first time, I'm not seeing it for the first time now, but just, you know, whoever's, 
necklace with a fish hanging dead on top of it, I guess also a symbol of Monte Carlo somehow. Um, for somebody who watches the collection for the first time, it's eclectic, but not necessarily in a good way. Again, the Grand Prix flags printed all over, very tacky. Sorry, this is not eleganza. No, uh, no. Um, so it, it kind of, you got to get used to all the textures and the layering and the patchwork. I guess maybe if I keep looking at this show, after I've seen it for the 10th, 15th time, I start appreciating it more. But when, where Karl Lagerfeld managed to do, oh, Sanchez, how's it going? So are you still working for them? Okay. So, Kaziragi dressed in blue denim, head to toe. Um, Karl managed to do the eclectic referential, the gimmicky things, the little bags that are in the shape of helmets, the slot machine bag, which we're going to see in detail later, like all that stuff. He was kind of good, good at doing that. Obviously not him. He had a team who designed accessories and obviously the same team is probably still des designing these little baglets. But when it comes to mixing up these fun, funny gimmicky moments, I think he did a better job than um, Virginie is doing. Javier says, this is giving very lazy creativity with the Monte Carlo referencing, says Javier. Yes, quite quite lazy, I agree with you. Um, so she is... So Virginie is kind of delivering, but not really. All of this is really boring and forgettable. Now, she's also referencing now, she's trying to bring into the game referencing not only what Carl used to reference, which was like the symbology of Chanel, the camellia, the chain, the matelassé, the hats right and he would kind of keep reinventing that little uh, tennis racket turned into a bag again how groundbreaking not he would uh you know reference all of the chanel uh symbology and create something brand new she is now trying to introduce carl's inventions and trying to make them into symbols of chanel so what does this mean you don't really see it here but we're going to look in detail into the details right after the show is over like she <coughs> took some of carl's most iconic bag designs that he made during his tenure at chanel i wonder how this visor works in real life i might i might want to pre-order the visor just saying because you know i collect sunglasses and all that stuff if the visor isn't small enough because i got a big head i might pre-order that for my chanel sunglasses collection um so now she turned his bags they're her collar his famous bags are turned into miniatures and then they're like attached to earrings or to necklaces or to rings or to bracelets so she's now introducing another iconic symbol within chanel but Coco Chanel never designed those bags. He did, but she's turning them into iconic moments. Do we like that? Mm, I'm still thinking about that. I'm debating whether or not I like that so much. Now, speaking of seasonal bag, yeah, it's okay. I don't know. I'm sick and tired of these sequins everywhere. Like, it, it's like literally, it's a luxury piece. So to show you that it's a luxury piece, we're going to put sequins on it. No, it makes it look cheap and tacky. Enough already with the freaking sequins. I'm done with it. And the freaking pearls attached to everything. Like, seriously, get, get a hold of yourself, Chanel. Do something new. So annoyed by this. Anyway, the tears, right? So first class tears sitting at the front row on the beach. And then we got the second row upstairs, which they're like less lesser clients that, that are not good enough to be photographed and filmed for the show. And then you got the exclusive EVVIP here in the water. Okay. Always this model, right? They always manage to dress her like a clown. Look at that. They did it again. And this is not as bad. I actually love that shirt. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my sales assistants. You see, but again, like okay, and I love this shirt too. These two silk shirts are actually my favorite. But I'm like, this is kind of sad that these are my favorite shirts of the collection. Because I'm thinking of me wearing them. Because I'm like, they're the simplest ones that there's no innovation in them. They're just simple. Living for those sunglasses, by the way. The, the, yes, yes, look at her walk on that beach like she owns the place. Bouncy hair and all, living ferret. Those shades are going to be in my collection. Just saying that already. Uh, choker, no. The little dread, okay, that little tiny... Oh, that bag, those sunglasses, <laughs> that little bag. I know it's a little checker for, you know, it's a chip. It's a gambling chip. Uh, here is the famous necklace, the bag, the hula hoop bag that uh, Carl did 2013, spring, summer 2013. Now it's turned into a necklace. I'm still debate. Why does she always do these bibs? 
She's been doing bibs on, on, on shirts and dresses since, since I don't know how many seasons now. Stop it with the bibs, Virginie. Huh? Will ya? Stop it with the bibs. Look at another bib. Uh, like we, the, the, like, girl, these women know how to eat. They're not gonna drip food all over them. They don't eat. They're models. So anyway, uh, necklaces are a little bit meh. Color combos, a lot of this is made for the Asian market. This is very clear. Chanel knows that their target customer that has the most money is in Asia at the moment. So a lot of these pieces are targeted to that market. They're not dumb. They know where the money flows. So, where the money flows, Chanel goes. Yeah, best believe. Again, I guess the vanity cases are, are here to stay, you guys. What can I tell you? A lot of these chicks are still carrying those freaking vanity cases. There's a 22 backpack. Interesting to know that the Cruise Collection, other than the backpack, they're not showing us other 22 bags. This by no means means, in my opinion, that the 22 bag is over. I don't think so. So this is kind of like attempting at being a wedding dress. I kind of like this. It's giving me major 80s vibes. And this collection is also giving me 80s vibes. There's a lot of... I love this pink. Again, those sequins! How is she supposed to sit in this thing? They're all gonna... And the bib. Here we go with the bibs. Uh, yeah, it's just like, oh, well, it's luxury. So we're gonna add sequins to make it more precious. No, you're just making it more unwearable with the freaking sequins. Anyway, but Chanel seems to love their sequins. And it's just so irritating to me because I'm so done with it. But, um... Ugh. Oh, it's sparkly, so it's expensive. It's so ridiculous. Find another way, Chanel, to depict luxury. Please. Stop it with the freaking sequins. Like, really, we've had enough of it. And the embellish. And look, it's embroidered. Yeah, okay, good. You know it's embroidered, not in France. So anyway, then we got the tier three clients sitting up, up, up there. So... <laughs> Okay, this is the last model, of course, uh, whatever her name, I forget her name. I was noticing how Charlotte Kaziragi, I think Charlotte might be a little bit jealous of her because whenever she passes by, Charlotte turns around, doesn't want to look at her. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly not embroidered in France. Allegedly not embroidered in France. Everything I say in this video is just my opinion only, for entertainment purposes only. I do not state facts, I only state my opinion. Allegedly not embroidered in France. Oh my god. Okay, so anyway, the last one who is always the face of Chanel since several seasons also looks super depressed and boring to me. My opinion only. Virginie or whoever for the marketing team chose that model to represent them. She's giving me boredom to the point of no return vibes since many seasons now and I just, I'm so annoyed. The Moomoo minus the bib is kind of cool. I want that Moomoo so my um, pandemic weight won't show. So I think the Moomoo was a clever move. The Moomoo covers all the body so I guess it's also for the Middle East. But hey, I want the Moomoo <laughs> minus the bib. Take that bib off, nobody wants it major 80s vibes with that dress with that white dress major 80s vibes and this kind of clash of different styles in one that's also serving the 80s vibes but you know what's missing though it's missing the sexuality the pizzazz the ostentatious flirtation of the 80s and this is something that vision ibia just doesn't have very dry you know, her fashion, she's trying to reference the 90s, she's trying to reference the 80s, the best of times of Chanel, but she doesn't go there. Everything, everything is dried out. And listen, don't get me wrong, these are way more wearable than Carl's pieces were. Yeah, Carl's pieces were more um, theatrical and costumey. This is actually wearable stuff, so I understand. It's actually clever. But it doesn't deliver the dream anymore. It doesn't deliver the ah moment. Yes, you the individual single pieces, you know, if you if you detach them from the terrible styling, the styling is dreadful, my opinion only. Dreadful styling. But if you were to take the single pieces alone, some of them, minus the sequence, very wearable, very wearable. More wearable than a lot of Carl pieces used to be, my opinion only. But 
the overall mood it's sad it's depressing uh, it's not innovative it's it's referencing the past but it's not adding anything new to it it's actually detrimental to the past because it's it's lackluster bottom line it's lackluster oh great little racquetball turn uh, tennis uh, racket turn into a bag groundbreaking you know what i mean now I believe if Carl did a racket, uh, a tennis uh, ball racket bag, he probably also would have done it, but he, I don't know, something would have been different. Something would have been different. You see what I mean? The two silk, the sunglasses, yes, I want. The two silk sh uh, uh, shirts, yes, I want. Um, I don't want them if they're gonna cost ten thousand dollars. That's for sure. That that did anybody a, a fool can see they're not worth that much. But uh, let's see. I'm gonna ask my sales associate and uh, uh, how much they would cost, and then I, I will decide if I will pre-order them or not. But the two black shirts, the simplest ones. I just love the little clown moment going around the neck of one of them. I, I love it. I personally think it's great. But is it anything new? Hell no. It's the oldest design available and I'm like interesting that I'm going for the oldest thing like the most classic Chanel referencing piece yeah we're at that point I think in history where fashion doesn't deliver anything you know it's about if you're gonna spend a huge amount let's be very honest about this you guys if you're gonna spend a huge amount of money on a piece like Chanel you don't want to buy something that you're gonna not be able to wear a year from now you're gonna want to buy the most classic piece they have because for that amount of money you're spending you want to wear you want to buy something that is not going to go out of fashion you want to wear something that is going to be a classic forever so i'm not going to buy stuff with the monte carlo flags on it from the grand prix ridiculous if i'm going to get something it's going to be the most classic piece oh there she goes Look, look at her go. She's gonna be like, wait, hold on. She's like, where am I? Oh my god. Oh, sorry, you guys. Wrong, wrong beach. Sorry. Let me. This is a private beach. I, I gotta go to the other beach. Sorry, you guys. Um. So that there you go. Now listen, I'm not saying it's all bad. There's some good stuff in there. As I said, individual pieces you can wear them. Styling dreadful. Sure, they're gonna make it all look glitzy and luxurious because they're gonna make a great two catalogs. One quick catalog to give out. They're going to make a book catalog to extra special clients. They're going to make it look all preppy. They're going to invest a lot of money making those book catalogs. They're going to invest a lot of money in expensive photographers to photograph it to make it look more interesting. But the photo is not the piece you're buying. You're buying the actual piece worn by the model in the photo. She's like, you guys clapped for that. See, Lala says, ah. Uh, and um, individual pieces, sure, why not? Okay, now... Uh, so, all right, so, 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 so I'm going to show you a couple of the pieces. For example, you see we got um, Karl Lagerfeld's uh, Timeless Classic bag. Actually, that turn lock that allegedly he invented turned into a necklace. So that's kind of the whimsy of this. But they perforated the bag to make the chain go around it. Like, girl, you could have found a better way to do it, right? Then what else? This is a bag I, I, I personally liked. I don't know about you guys, but it's it's a camera bag. It's super simple. It looks like one of their beauty case bags. But this, uh, the fabric bag with the pied de poule or hound's tooth, and then it has those perforations and the chain going through it. I kind of like this one. I don't need that double C logo there, but it is there, but nothing right nothing special i kind of i just i liked it um she looks super depressed oh my god this is so annoying like like what's up with this what's up with this look like look at this it's like it's like they told her if you show an ounce of emotion you're fired this is such a snobby look and i hate that chanel endorses this and that they kind of want to look like that so annoying. Um, so the, the tennis racket bag is not just in the shape of a tennis racket, but also in the shape of a bag that has a tennis racket in it. So basically it's this. Oh, let me zoom it in even more. 
So you can purchase this thing, which is really ugly, like beyond ugly. But also the thing that I'm interested, okay, it doesn't, if it doesn't fit on a model's head and models are super tiny, then on me, it's going to look ridiculous. But on her, this plastic visor, which I'm kind of interested in getting for my collection, already on her, it looks too small. She also looks super unhappy. Look at her. Uh, and um, that visor would probably look even more ridiculous on me. And it already looks ridiculous on her. But, you know, I do my eyewear and visor Chanel collection, so that might be a thing. Oh, my God, these sneakers are dreadful. She's But I guess sporty sneakers to do sports. I mean, they're not the worst sneakers Chanel made. Chanel has made much uglier than this. This is kind of okay if you really want to do sports. But if you really want to do sports, you don't buy Chanel sneakers. You buy other brands. Okay, here is the close-up of Carl's hoop hula hoop bag turned into a necklace that little tiny black thing right there and they made it also as earrings i think it's also attached to a bracelet to a ring and then she has another bag pink bag attached uh, as an earring it's a gimmicky thing do i like it maybe it's kind of cute it references carl I don't know. I mean, this jacket is okay, too. It's a little bit strict. It's a little bit strict. But I don't mind this jacket. I kind of like this jacket. You see what I mean? When you start, like, zooming into the collection and you start looking at the details, you might find stuff that is okay. It doesn't seem to have any sequence on it. So, no palette. Uh, so, this one is okay. The jacket. Could look cute. Cute. Not as a matchy-matchy total look. It's ridiculous. Look at this dreadful styling but on its own doesn't feel new or exciting says Asia A. Nora A says reminds me of Jacques Mousse oh yes they, they've been unfortunately right I'm just like girl you don't want to reference Jacques Mousse Oof, that's the last person I would want to reference uh, Ollie says I love the jackets and short combos yeah I don't know here's that whimsical bag great yeah, that's that. Whatever. Um, then what else did I kind of screenshot, you know? Okay, so the Pulcinella kind of, you know, the, the clown shirt. I, I love this one um, for me, okay? Hold on. I don't need to zoom this one in. I just need to show you the full look. This one... For yours truly, in a huge size, like oversized, I think this would this could look gorgeous. I personally love this piece. Now I know it's it's boring. We've seen this a billion times, especially in the '90s and in the '80s. You know, Jacob, did you uh, did you see the Chanel hanger earrings? Oh, honey, yes, I have. Um. Did you see the Chanel hanger earrings? Did Chanel watch my videos the past couple of years? Cause I made them. I cut I cut a Chanel hanger and I made the I mean it's a bit dusty because it's flocked. And I just have it hanging around here. Like it's a little just I don't care. It's, it's all dusty because I have it just have it hanging around so it collects dust. But I made this thing a couple of years ago. Um with all the, let me take the dust off. It's so annoying. You're all gonna throw shade at me now of like being a ratchet, dusty hoe. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Shut up. Shut up. Right? H R H vibes. Um. Yes. So you're welcome, Chanel. Let's keep looking. Um. Philip says, as a tennis player, I like the tennis racket bag. Yeah, it's a whimsical. It's like a thing. Like, if you're into that stuff, I get it. I totally get it. If you're into that stuff, then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's a cool thing, right? I totally get it. I totally get what you're saying. But, like, there's not a lot of us who care about tennis. You know what I mean? That's the problem. It's a bag that, like, 10 people are going to like because they like tennis, right? Here, this shirt also, Live in Ferret. 
It has a little, the, the sleeves are a bit short, so this one probably would not fit me. And it's actually more of a dress shirt. It's really long. I kind of like the Pulcinella one more than this one, so I'm definitely going to ask how much it costs. But again, boring black shirt, you know, shirt, whatever. But hey, it's something I would wear my whole life until it breaks. You know what I mean? That's why I'm thinking, you, you want Chanel, you get the piece that is Chanel. Bim Black says, I remember that hula hoop bag. Last time I went to Vintage Bag Shop in Saint-Germain, they had this bag in big version. A sales associate said, it's one of a kind runway piece. It's not one of a kind runway piece. It was sold in every boutique in different sizes. Don't let them fool you into thinking it's a one of a kind. Just Yapping says, yes, that black shirt is cute, right? But it's so simple. You might think, why do I have to spend five to $10,000 on it when the same shirt is made by other brands? And that's also true because nobody's going to know it's Chanel except for you. But, oh well. Jesus says, the plus size model, they made her look like a Nana. <laughs> I know they made her look really weird this time. Um, let me show you the next. Okay, so uh, again, a bib on a vest. But forget about the bib. The bib, I, I, I don't get why Virginie is so obsessed with these bibs. But the sunglasses is where it's at for me. And I do think that they have like a pearly double C on the side. It's white on the side, might be dotted white pearls or something, but it's an oversized, huge model, live in ferret. And now there's a second pair of sunnies. These have a bit of a weirder shape because a little bit more rounded at the top, but they also have that huge kind of double C temple moment going on in the back. Check out Jacob, did you really just say live in ferret? Yes, of course I, I did. I did, Stephen. Uh, and then we also have the um, other bag that Carl designed many years ago, which was a little tiny classic, uh, timeless classic with a hanger clip on it to hold it. It was kind of like very Moschino-esque. And now they've turned that into a necklace bag. There you have it. Also, just like the hula hoop bag, now also this bag is turned into a moment. The Timeless Classic Pink is turned into also a necklace. So we're turning all of these Karl Lagerfeld designed bags into iconic pieces added to jewelry. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Why not? Why not, I say, right? Here, here we have again the hula hoop. So they've styled the hula hoop bag on a lot of necklaces and on a lot of costume jewelry. And here we have it again. That little gold thing underneath there, right there. I don't know why that thing is there. It might be there because the bag is openable. Maybe the bag can open and you could put something inside. I don't know if that's a hinge of sorts. Okay, call me Kreskin, you guys. But Michelle Crawford says, Jacob, how much for the hanger earring? <laughs> it's an original Chanel hanger. And then it was cut by me and a friend of mine. Uh, it has a kind of a laser cutting machine. So, uh, isn't it gorgeous? It, now, unlike the hula hoop bag, this is one of a kind. There is only one in existence. So I don't know. How much do you want? How much do you want to pay for it, Michelle? <laughs> um, I'm in a selling mood today. What you want? <laughs> Michelle is like, how much for the earring? <laughs> that red hair model looked like Anna Delvey. Maybe it was. Okay, call me Kreskin, you guys, but listen. This bag... Am I crazy to say this? But I think this bag was my favorite from the collection. I don't know why. And I don't like that double C on it. But I think it's kind of cute. It's so useless. But I kind of like that it's a round circle and that it has a hole to put your hand through it. It's terrible. It's so unpractical because you keep your hand on the chain and then like your own sweat, like your own acids from your own hand are going to keep touching that chain and then it's going to corrode the chain. Like it's, it's not a practical bag, right? But uh, why do I like this bag? I want this bag. Do I want this? Yes, I do. Weird, right? It's kind of the bag nobody noticed. Like nobody's talking about that bag except for me. And guess what the model is wearing with the bag? Wait a minute, it looks like tiny Fendi bag, says Bim Black. Louis says, it gives me Fendi bag vibes. Aisha says, it's cute and super mini. Kev says, that's giving me Fendi vibe, though. Uh, no, it's not, you guys. It doesn't spell out Chanel at the bottom like the Fendi one does. But what does she wear? A onesie with a bib. 
And again, we get a bib. What's up with these bibs? Just terrible. Anyway, so this is giving you Fendi vibes. I know which bag you're referencing, but the Fendi one would, would spell out Fendi at the bottom, right? Yeah, I guess it is giving a little bit Fendi vibes. But I prefer this to Fendi. Brass knuckles, but make it Chanel says Isabella. Yeah, I guess it does give us a little bit... Oh, God. Look at the depression that is her. Look at the depression. Look at the depression that is her. Look at all of it. All of that depression. And the bib. The bib on the muumu. Cha, I can't. I don't mind the Maltese cross bracelet. Because it's like a cuff, not cuff moment. It's a cuff, but... Not the classic plexiglass cuff we're used to from Chanel. So this one is kind of okay, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then the Maltese cross longer necklace without the hanging little extra dangly bit that nobody cares for. So not the upper necklace, the lower necklace is kind of okay, except I don't like that white circle around the Maltese cross. But that's kind of meh. Look at all the sequins. Look at this whole thing covered in sequins. So terrible. And that that belt, though. Girl. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Now, as for close-ups, the little chip, it's a bag. It's, it's, it's going to be small as this. So the chip is a moment. Definitely going to ask the sales associate how much this would cost. Considering that the chip, it looks like a metal plate on leather. It looks like the matelassé quilting underneath the chip, the black. You see, that's kind of quilted underneath, not the actual chip, but behind here on the board, on the on the on the border there. You see a little bit of quilting. Could be like leather with a metal plate on top. I don't know. I'm gonna get to that. I don't know if this is gonna be three thousand, four thousand, five. 000, who knows? <laughs> And then we got the little bags on rings. You best believe this thing is going to break immediately. This thing, you're going to wear it out once and that little bag is going to flip around. It's going to break off. You know it is. You know it is. And then we have this little piece here, which is the slot machine bag. Terrible. I mean, novelty piece. But again, all of these crystals that they put around the slot machine, you know they're all going to fall off. I hate that they put all those crystals there. And I hate that they put all of the crystals right there. Right there. It just cheapens the whole thing tremendously. Take those crystals off and then we're getting somewhere. Coco Chanel herself said, simplify, take off rather than add. This thing is a bit way too much. Um, then this little thing behind the scenes caught my eye. I didn't see this on the runway, but I saw it on somebody's Insta. Check this out. What do we think about this really rough, oversaturated, rainbow dyed leather? What do we think about it's it's an it's an unfo it's a, it's a bag I saw in a corner of a photo. There's it's not even highlighted. I mean it's a double flap, so it's gonna probably cost you by the next price increase. It's probably gonna cost you ten thousand dollars. I think it's a little bit rough around the edges, the way that they kind of dyed this leather. But anyway, that's another piece I wanted to show you that kind of caught my eye. And that's it. That's my review of the Chanel Monte Carlo uh, 5522 show. Uh, just Yopping says, just no. Louis says, so ugly. Uh, Asia says, new unicorn bag, neon version. Uh, wh who, what, one, two, three says, my eyes hurt. Silala says, I, I just... I think just no. Uh, kind of cool, but those dyes won't react well to each other, says Jack. Oh, that's a good point, Jack. Taste the Chanel rainbow, says Ollie. Not for me, says Sharon Cole. Unique Rivera says, I'm all for the color, but maybe not in that style bag. Orsi says, horrible. Yes, but no, says children's bag. Melissa says, no, thanks, but it will be a FOMO. Oh, 
I think so too. That's what caught my eye. I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh my God, I want the rainbow bag. Oh, where can I get the rainbow bag? Leslie says, love the poker chip. The poker chip bag is a cutie, isn't it? Rhonda Fraser says, yikes, horrible. Aisha says, great review. Thank you so much, Aisha. Denise Laird says, hi, y'all. Hope you're all well. We are. I hope you're well, too, you guys. And thank you so much for watching my review. And you're welcome, Chanel, for the ideas. And until next time, don't forget to never give up on love. Comments down below. Subscribe.